Hi, Carl. Good morning to you. I'm joined now by Joe Berktold, president of Live Nation, fresh on the heels of that company, reporting last night. Its revenue fell 98 percent in light of concerts really coming to a screeching halt in the second quarter. Um, Joe, tell me now your CEO says he's confident about the return to a healthy concert business in, in next summer. Now, really predicting things will come roaring back next summer. But how can you be so confident when there's still so many uncertainties, both about a vaccine and about consumer spending? Good morning, Julia. Thanks for having me on. Yes, uh, as Michael said yesterday, we are confident that come next summer, we'll have a large outdoor season, our festivals our amphitheaters. The one thing we have seen through this shutdown is how much the fans truly do want to go to the shows. So if we've looked at the opportunity, when the fans have had the opportunity to refund their ticket or keep it, 86% of the fans are keeping their tickets. Even festivals, which have largely canceled through the course of this year, when fans have the opportunity to keep their ticket for next, next year's festival, two thirds of them are doing so, despite the relatively large ticket there. So as a result, we've sold over 19 million tickets for over 4,000 concerts for next year. And that gives us just a sign that even during these uncertain times, how much fans are valuing the opportunity to get back to the concert as soon as it's safe to do so. But even after a vaccine, even when it's safe to get back to concerts, it could take a really long time for this economy to recover. Obviously, we have unprecedented unemployment. Isn't it possible people will be looking to spend less either on every ticket they buy or to go to fewer concerts every year. How are you going to handle that? Are you going to have to lower prices? Yeah, well, one of the things, again, that we've seen is, is when fans are surveyed, they're clearly continuing to put concerts as a top priority in terms of how they think about spending their discretionary money. They see it as an affordable night out. We've seen this in other recessions that, by and large, fans continue to spend through, uh, on concerts through the recessions. And I think that over the past decade, our ability to really understand pricing, how to price the tickets in the front of the house so we're getting as much money as possible for the artists, uh, from the people that want to spend the large amount to get in the first row, the 10th row, and then how we make it affordable through the rest of the building so that fans are able to get in and enjoy the show. We're acutely aware that we need to make sure those tickets are affordable for everybody. And we think we've got the ability to do the analytics and understand how we can make that affordable. Joe, this is Kayla Tausche in Washington. Uh, looking at your financials, you have $3.3 billion in cash on hand this quarter. But next summer is a long way away. How much do you need? And are you confident you can raise that money? Yeah, we've taken strong action in the early months to make sure that we're able to get through to next summer. Uh, we've cut $800 million in spending, $1.4 billion reduction in cash flow to get there. Uh, with the existing liquidity that we have, we're down to a burn rate of about $185 million a month. So if you play that out, that lets us get through to next summer where we ramp up. Uh, and if we're going to have a large summer season next year with our concerts, that means we start selling tickets by the beginning of the year. So that ticket revenue We'll start to drive our, our income in the early year. Sponsorship will follow and then really ramp up along with the concerts as we get into Q2, Q3 of next year. So we expect that we do have the but liquidity. So, so much of next year's calendar is our shows that are rescheduled from this year that have been canceled. How much of what you expect to come back next year and the events that are scheduled, how much of that represents deferred revenue where customers have already paid for these tickets, they haven't refunded them, uh, but they're just waiting for that event to take place? Right. So we have, we expect that we'll end this year with about $1.3 billion of deferred revenue. Our revenue in the concert business was running $8, $9 billion before this happened. So there's still a lot more tickets to be sold. Um, but our liquidity that we look at, the $2.7 billion of available cash or available debt is without taking into account the use of any of that deferred revenue. So without touching that, with just looking at what's our free cash plus about $950 million of available debt, we have the liquidity to get through the next summer. 
Uh, Joe, to Kayla's point about the financial pressure you're under now, um, even, you know, before, you know, not, not taking into account those deferred ticket, that deferred ticket revenue, you have been trying to generate revenue from two things, drive-in concerts and also virtual concerts. How profitable are those and what's the potential for those businesses going forward? Yeah, those businesses, I think, again, are a great indicator of just how much the fans and the artists want to continue to connect, even in these difficult times. The virtual concerts have absolutely taken off. We've had over 67 million people watch uh, virtual concerts from our platform. Lollapalooza last weekend had over 800,000 people just in that weekend watching uh, the festival. So the virtual concerts are showing a real demand. Thus far, thus far, a lot of them have been free streams just to keep the fans and the artists engaged during this difficult time. But we absolutely see that as another service that we can provide artists uh, business going forward. It is another revenue stream for artists as we all try to come out of this using our platform, we put on the show. So we have the theater in which to record and to distribute the virtual concert. And by using Ticketmaster as a platform to sell the tickets, we've got the ability to really drive volume in a way that I think most others can't. And at the same time, the drive-in is the ultimate tailgate. It's a way for some fans to connect with artists. We've been working carefully with the health officials to make sure we're putting these on in a safe way. Uh, but still gives fans some opportunity to connect with the artists. These aren't going to be operating at scale, driving huge revenue over the next six months, but I think the virtual concerts in particular can be meaningful as we come out of this as an additional revenue stream.